Okay, so as I said, um, the um, the session today will really cover an overview of the grant programme, um, some information about um, what can make a good project, um, some um, tips and hints on uh, things to consider when writing your application, um, and then we'll we'll stop the presentation and answer any questions that people have. Um, we'd also really love to hear your ideas as well, because I think it's really useful um, if people share what they're, they're thinking about and we can give some um, uh, guidance of um, how that might fit in with the, the grant programme. Um, and also you might be able to make some connections with others that are on the call as well. So as you may be aware, um, this grant programme, it's the um, uh, Birmingham City Council Windrush 75 Small Grants Programme um, and we are offering grants of up to £2,000 um, and that is for um, community groups and organisations um, who are looking to deliver pro projects which recognise the contribution of the Windrush generation um, and their descendants in Birmingham um, which coincides with the um, Windrush 75 activity that's happening in the city. Um, so as I've already mentioned it is aimed at community groups and not-for-profit organisations and um, this fund isn't really for individuals and um, so if you are an individual and you would be interested in 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 kind of applying for this program and um, we'd ask you to be um, with a within a collective or sponsored by an established um, organisation that is not for profit um, the fund will support a range of um, different events, workshops, activities and awareness raising campaigns, which my colleagues will talk a bit more about um, as we get later into the presentation. Um, and we're looking for those activities that are going to meet the aims of the project um, of the fund. Um, I will keep saying it, but the deadline for applications is Wednesday the 19th of April and that's at 5 p.m. Um, and you'd need to submit an application to the NDSU team, which we'll, we'll keep sharing the, um, the, the email address so you know where to send it to. Um, so just cover really the the aims of the fund. Um, so we're we're looking to fund a range of activities and events, um, which could be um, uh, so the aims are really to to mark the 75th anniversary um, as it's a significant milestone. Um, we're looking to engage um, UK Caribbean communities and we want to really capture stories and experience um, experiences and celebrate contributions to to Birmingham and um, we really want people to share stories um, and their experiences and hope that that will then spark a wider conversation about the the positive in, impact of migration um, and we also want to celebrate the rich culture and traditions that Caribbean people have brought to Birmingham. Um, so this is just a timeline of the, the, the fund really, so as you're aware um, we are open for applications um, and the deadline is Wednesday the 19th of April, I'm going to keep saying that, um, and what will happen is once you've submitted your application um, via the NDSU um, email address, um, there'll be an assessment period where we do our internal in, um, due diligence and there'll be a review of the applications. Um, now to consider these applications, um, we are setting up a, a community decision making panel um, and that will include um, people that have links to the, the, the UK Caribbean community um, and organisations and groups um, within Birmingham um, and the aim is for applicants to be notified of decisions week commencing the 26th of May. Um, we do expect all successful groups um, to complete a um, conditions of grant aid. So if you've ever had funding from Birmingham City Council before, you will be aware of the conditions of grant aid. Um, we sometimes refer to it as a as a COGA, um, and that is just the, the the contract really, which details the the terms of the fund. Um, and once we receive that back, we then would be able to re um, release the grant payments. Um, and this will be for activity which will take place between. Monday the 5th of June and Monday the 31st of August so just really consider that when you're writing your application so it is for that specific time period so if you, this is for longer activity you might want to consider what you're applying for that fits within that time period um, and as with um, all of the grant programmes, you would uh, expect that there will be a requirement to um, submit some um, monitoring information which kind of details the activity that's taken place um, and the expenditure and things like that. Um, as part of the, the programme that um, 
of activity that's happening this year. Um, we all have also um, set up an events calendar where people can share their um, activities and events which will be taking place. So we may ask you for some information to include to that as well. Um, and we'd also be looking to do some evaluation activity alongside this as well. So you may be asked if successful um, to get involved with that. Um, what I'm going to do now is hand over to my colleague Rachel, who's just going to talk about um, uh, things to consider when you're planning your project. Yeah, so I'm just going to talk a bit about uh, what makes a good project. So I know um, amongst us tonight there will be people who have um, delivered a lot of projects and maybe some people who um, have really good ideas, but maybe they haven't done a project before. Um, so I'm just going to talk through some basic steps. Um, so just think carefully about who your target audience is and um, and think about, do you know what they want? If you don't know what they want, if it might just be an idea that's in your head and there might not be an audience for it, but it's really important for you to sort of take some time to, and you've got a bit of time before the deadline, to actually go and do some consultation, you know, and that could just be some chats with people who you think are your target audience um, and see what the response is. Uh, and if you get, you know, positive responses, then that sort of um, is a good indication that you're heading in the right direction. So what are you actually looking to achieve um, in with your project? Um, so there's a real diverse range of things that you could do. Um, I know Pat was talking about um, a real sort of uh, range of different things. So um, so it could be um, a one off event. It could be a series of events. It could be, um, you know, something that's actually available online. It could be a webinar. Um, is it going to be face to face? Um, so have a think about that. When is it going to be delivered? Um, is it going to be? Uh, you know, sort of, is it going to be in the evening? Is it going to be um, during an afternoon? So just think about all of those things and think about the knock on effects that these have um, in terms of, you know, your costings. Um, and this really links into the next thing, which is what funds are actually needed. So have you spoken to the place that you want to deliver your project? Um, is there a cost associated with that? Can that be negotiated? Um, possibly you could talk about um, the place that uh, talk with the place that want, is going to deliver where you want to deliver your project um, and you could negotiate. Maybe they'd be happy to work in partnership with you. Uh, at a reduced rate or provide the venue in kind. Um, so, yeah, this, these are all sort of considerations because um, I think that uh, certainly you can sometimes become very involved in your own project. And certainly myself, when I was uh, involved in a small community organisation and we were delivering a Windrush project, but then we weren't even aware that there was another Windrush celebration going on across the road, um, you know, at the same time. So this is really what I'm talking about is the benefit of working together with your community, seeing what's already out there, because, you know, it might be possible to sort of come together and work collaboratively so that your project doesn't take place at the same time when it's across the road from um, your project and you can either sort of both deliver a project and, and uh, basically one can be at one time and another can be at another time or you might want to sort of collaborate and do one larger project. Um, so you've got this great idea for your project but really you need to think about um, monitoring your uh, project right at the beginning, not leave it to the end so that um, your monitoring and evaluation framework is going to be in there from the beginning. And these are actually questions that are going to be asked within the application form. Um, and if 
uh, anybody has actually uh, applied for a grant through the NDSU before, then you'll know it's not a particularly complicated application form, but these questions regarding outcomes and monitoring, they are part of um, the questions that are asked. And that's really to sort of, uh, that's an opportunity for you to demonstrate that you've really sort of thought through your idea. Pat, did you have anything that you wanted to add? Yeah, thank you, Rachel. Well, just to add some ideas to um, what you've just said, uh, I would also say um, you should try and communicate with your elected members in the wards that you're applying for the funding, just to let them know that you are doing something or planning to do something in, in, in the area. Um, I've got a couple of ideas if people are struggling and do want to apply. You know, we're looking at heritage, we're looking at history of Windrush. Some of you um, on the call may be thinking around um, the fashion industry. And, and I know, you know, the first generation, you know, seamstress and fashion. Um, I'm just giving you a couple of pointers. I'm a kind of a creative idea person. Um, there's a couple of people on the call that I know have done um, through the Commonwealth uh, celebrating last year, did some domino teaching to the wider community that's quite diverse and I, I know that there's a youth club now looking to set up a domino league of young people who may never have played dominoes but would want to engage with an older generation get to understand the nature and I'm just using dominoes uh, as, as a pastime but it's also something uh, as a skill uh, a game that was played in many Caribbean islands and um, it's probably lost, but we might want to bring that back as a kind of a legacy. Um, also consider, you know, um, food. And I know, you know, we, we we tend to celebrate with food of any nature, but it's show and tell. Teach someone, um, share with someone that is probably not from the Caribbean or, you know, some of um, some of the food that you may like. Or, or again, when you're talking to um your audience is about how we share that and and pass that on uh uniform you know we had a number of um people that would have been in the raf uh nursing teachers you know going back in in history in terms of 75 years supplementary schools and those that ran supplementary schools or education things and it's just i i'm just giving you those as a couple of ideas uh, songwriting poetry writing a short play that you can put on in your community that shares the experience and you know bring people together uh, that are, are some of the ideas that i've got um, but i think it's really over to yourself to ask us questions and we'll try and answer them as much as we can please use the chat box if you're reluctant to put your mic on put your questions in the chat box and we'll get back to you with um, some answers and also you can also contact us on the NDSU website. Um, yeah, so Neil's just put um, something in the chat box about familiarising yourself with the uh, criteria. So uh, I will um, put the link in the uh, in the chat box so that you can uh, um, follow up and have a proper read of that. Um, but just when Pat was speaking, I was thinking that you know, if you have um, if if you've got a brand new idea, that's great. But we're not asking you to reinvent the wheel. So if it is something that maybe was uh, did take place through the, for example, the Celebrating Communities Fund that we um, had last year um, and it relates to Windrush, then that might be something that you could um, you could base your um, your project upon so it could be a new idea it could be a developed existing idea okay 
Brilliant. And and just as a reminder, because I like to say this multiple times, so um, if you haven't already got access to the application form and the guidance notes, then um, please visit the, the website. You can go onto the Birmingham City Council page and if you just put in Windrush 75, it will come up um, and, and you can download both the application form and the, the guidance notes. Um, so, yeah, as Neil said, please read the, the, the guidance, um, which I think I'd put on the, 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 the previous slide. Um, I would say keep it simple when writing your application so just make sure that you're quite clear and what it is that you're trying to achieve so we're not asking you to write reams and reams of information we just want a really good understanding of what it is you're trying to achieve and how and when you will do those activities um, and um, yeah so just reminder that Wednesday the 19th of April is the deadline at 5 p.m and um, if you have any questions that are not answered by this session that you'd like to just talk about in a bit more detail, then feel free to email us at the um, NDSU at birmingham.gov.uk. Um, and also, if you have any problems with completing the application form, um, then feel free to get in contact with us and a member of the team will be in touch. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close this down um, and just see if anybody has any questions at all.